Good afternoon, everyone. Um, it's a bit of a long story, but I'll keep it short. Five years ago, I ran into Mr. Keshe. Uh, the reason for that was I was asked to do an article on free energy. I said, well, that's quite simple, you know. I can be very honest because there is no free energy. So this article will be very short, just one line. There is no free energy. And, uh, well, you, you, you can imagine I had a bit of a problem writing this article. So I thought, well, perhaps I need to interview someone who is doing this stuff, you know. It's difficult to find some people who are into this business and for free energy and they want to come forward and to explain what they're actually doing. So I was looking around, trying to get some people, some, some people in America, but you know, that's a long flight, so no, no, not America. There must be somewhere here in the Netherlands or wherever, just around, someone who can be explain a bit more about free energy. I couldn't find him. Then at one point I walked into a press room of uh, a show, a bit like this, yeah, and uh, there was a press room and I walked in and um, I found a man sitting there and he was explaining something. And the way he was explaining something was a bit weird because he didn't have press releases or he didn't have uh, specific, you know, typical business type of stuff around him. No, he was having this uh, cola bottle and he was carrying around with uh, wires and he had uh, multimeters, etc. And I didn't know who it was and I was not invited for that party. So when I got home, I googled uh, cola bottle, uh, free energy, etc. And the first hit was a certain Mr. Cash. And I, you know, I, I didn't know who it was, but I got in contact with him and we, uh, we met up in, uh, in Antwerp. And that was, I think, five years ago now. Over the years, we had different conversations about what he was working on. I can be honest. I don't understand at all what is this going about. And if someone here in the room uh, is capable of what is going on, you know, you're, you've got my vote. But um, no, it's, it's difficult to understand what exactly is going on. But the results were, you know, strange and in intriguing. You know, he showed a couple of things which I said, okay, what, what is this? We cannot explain this by the typical natures of electricity or energy or whatever. Um, so we, we kept conversa uh, our conversation going and at some point we said, okay, well, demonstrate us now something which, you know, which we understand. So have something moving or give, so, give some light to, to some electronics or whatever. And um, I remember we were with a small group in our uh, laboratory for, uh, for Elector. Um, which, which is, by the way, a magazine on electronics. To be honest, I don't think a lot of people here in this room ever been reading the magazine. Can I just ask, how many people have been reading Electro magazine? Wow, not too bad, not too bad. <laughs> but uh, we, we, uh, we invited uh, Mr. Kesha over in, uh, in our lab and said, okay, show us what you have. And he showed us a couple of things and said, okay, well, that's interesting. And we actually could not explain what we were seeing. Um, in the preparation of this event, Electro Life, I thought, well, perhaps this might be an opportunity to ask Mr. Keshe and to ask him to, stick, to take the stage and to simply show and demonstrate what he's been working on uh, over the years. And um, so that is basically it. You know, it's a platform, the floor is free to have a look at something which perhaps you've never seen before or to hear things which you've never seen before. And that is, you know, that is an adventure, because then you start thinking different. So, you probably all know him, but uh, I'd like, still like to introduce Mr. Keshe to the stage and ask him to do his presentation. Give him a hand. Thank you very much for coming. Uh, as Mr. Hatinga said, the conversation is always about energy. To us, in Keshe Foundation, we don't look at energy the way you do. In a way, you look for a free energy, you look for a generator, you look for a lamp or a battery. We look at the energy as a spectrum of energy. How your body works, uses this energy, how energy is generated in the universe, and how we can use part of it which we don't know, or the other people think we don't, they don't know, and we call it a free energy, because it's literally like a magic box. The thing is, everything is there. It's just how you take it out of your pocket, which 
changes the scenery. And what it means is that there's a lot of talk about free energy. The ones who manage to break through, and they call it a free energy, they are the ones who manage to go to a slightly higher dimension of the magnetic field and then slow it down enough that it becomes visible and tangible to us. That we call it electricity. So the only strange things which we do and people think we do miracles is we have understood the structure of atom in its real sense, not in a forced sense, which we've been forced to accept. What this means is that in the atoms, we tell us in the world of electronics, in the world of physics, I'm a physicist, I'm not a doctor, that a proton and you have an electron. And then we go back and ask people, people who've been to my presentation know what I'm talking about. We ask people, we ask scientists, we had physicists in our presentation. We ask them, can we, what is an electron? They say, we don't know. We know when we look on the electronic gadgets that there is a fuzzy white thing which moves around. That's all we see. But this what has been made a mystery for us. In reality, I always explain it in a very, very simple way. Then you, by the time I finish, you'll be as good electronic and nuclear physicist as I am. We say this is a neutron. In the physics, we say when the neutron splits, it creates electron and a proton. And if you say this is a neutron and part of it, it becomes proton and the other part, a small part of it becomes electron. And then you ask a physicist what's in there, he says, I don't know. It's the same thing in a smaller quantity. So for the first time, we understand that the electron is a plasma itself. So this has been the whole mystery of what and how we play the game. An atom of hydrogen or a plasma of a hydrogen or proton, whatever you call it, neutron, has been on Earth for billions of years, from the beginning of the time of the Earth. And they say it's going to go on a few billion years. So there is enough energy hidden within one plasma for this plasma to show its existence for 10, 20 billion years. So if you can open it up and go to the sun, you can pick up little bits and little bits what you need to produce enough food to feed a man for a lifetime from one plasma. It's all knowing how much of it you want. It's knowing where you want to take, how much you want to take. So energy becomes free. They say, I create free energy. No. I know how to go and pinch a little bit. You don't know, you don't understand, and look magician. That's all it is. So the next step was how we can use this in different aspects of the technology. And in the same discussion was suggestion of Mr. Hittinga, because we have a very good relationship with Mr. Hittinga, was that make me a torch which works with water. Then we answer the energy problem. Am I correct? So more or less. So I went home and I thought, I don't need water. I can do it because I understand the structure of gravitational magnetic pool. I can do it out of fresh air. So a few months later, we built his idea of a torch with the water, but torch without any water. Torch in the universe, how to convert energy into electronics or electric current, and in a simple way, we do not need any more water. This torch has been going on nearly for two years plus. And for us to be make sure scientifically we are correct, we sent an email every day to the other member of the Cash Foundation. It's still bending, it's still enlightened. It's not a short term. But in reality, what you see as a light in this is part of your own individual energies, which is emanated. Once you've been in this room, you release fields. And this material, which is developed, can absorb it and change it to electronics and electric currents. And if you can take it a step further, create a condition for it. And we haven't done one. We got quite a few. You can always check. It's very easy. It's the same process. 
it's very easy to be done because you can repeat the same process over and over again. This is a matter of understanding plasma, understanding energy. So in so many ways, we went further. You can take a picture because it's easier to see it. We went a step further in finding out how you can make minute energy, because big energies are not useful in the space. You want little ones that you can control. So in so many ways, if you, I can put it that way, you can record it. People look for milliwatts and megawatts. I look for little, little, little watts because this is what matters. So if you can absorb in little, little energies, you simply come to this empty box of universe. That's all it is. This is what I call the empty box of universe, but you have to know where to look for it and what to look for. I have said a lot of times in the past that if the scientists could understand what I release, we would have had no more wars. But at the moment, there's too much intention and too much impression of building things, big things where we are missing the little things, which is the cornerstones of our creation. So, in so many ways, You've seen how the small development of the energy and matter and energy from one conversation to another with a little newspaper called Elector has led to discoveries and furthermore. And that's one of the reasons we keep a very good relationship with Mr. Hatinga, because it's a mutual respect. It's people who are open to new technologies and allow the new generations to come into understanding more of the reality in the way it brings us back to the end of our conversation and presentation. In understanding the simple structure of the magnetic and gravitational fields has allowed us to develop different things. And as I always say, if you take the steps of knowledge from now on from what we learn, we haven't even stood up to walk yet. And this building has a thousand steps. It's depending on the next generation and other people who see the wisdom in their own way to take this to the further and next step. Thank you very much.